And Daniel knows that God alone is the only one who can reveal mysteries to us. Like, there are a lot of things that we aren't going to understand in life. From, like, the simplest of things to the biggest of things. I wish you guys could be here for Super K, which is our fourth and fifth grade time. Because they ask the best questions. And by that I mean they're just not afraid. They're not afraid to ask the first thought that comes to their mind. And these are the thoughts that come to their mind. How does God exist? And one of the questions they asked today is, does God have parents? And I was like, no, God doesn't have parents. God just exists. And they were like, how does that work? Like, these sweet little 9 and 10-year-olds are like, I need you to explain to me how that works. And I'm like, I don't even understand. Isn't that cool? And they're like, that's weird. I'm like, it is weird, but it's awesome, right? <laughs> that our minds can't understand that, that sort of mystery. But yet we have a God who does understand that mystery. Uh, Daniel knows that there's only one king who's going to continue to rule. There's only one king who's never going to be removed from power, who is always going to be, and his kingdom is everlasting. And he's the king of kings, and he's the lord of lords. And what's really cool is that we're going to see through Daniel's life multiple times Nebuchadnezzar is going to recognize that God is bigger than him. Because in Babylonian culture and Egyptian culture, the pharaoh or the emperor or the king, a lot of times they believed that they were like the son of a god. That they themselves were like a demigod of some sort. And here's a guy who, had, who was raised to believe that he was a god recognizing that there is a bigger God than him because of Daniel's faithfulness. Daniel approaches God in prayer. God reveals to him the mystery of King Nebuchadnezzar's dream. He goes to King Nebuchadnezzar, says, hey, you had a, you had a dream about a statue, and that statue was made up of very different pieces of iron, and that this is what this is going to represent. Basically, Daniel lays out like the future for him. He's like, hey, this is your kingdom right now. Next, this is going to be the kingdom that follows. And then this kingdom, and then this kingdom, and then this kingdom. And this is what Nebuchadnezzar's response to Daniel is. Verse 47. The king answered Daniel and said, Surely your God is a God of gods, and a Lord of kings, and a revealer of mysteries, since you have been able to reveal this mystery. Then the king promoted Daniel and gave him many great gifts, and he made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief prefect over all the wise men of Babylon. So we see Nebuchadnezzar recognize God as being God, which is cool. Um, but because Daniel honored and respected the small authority set above him that could have killed him, because he ultimately was honored and respecting the main authority, Daniel doesn't get death. He gets gifts and he gets like placed into even higher places of honor. And if you go read through the book of Daniel, you're going to see kind of this trend happen a lot in Daniel's life where he's walking faithfully with the Lord and it's either Nebuchadnezzar or King Cyrus come along and they make some crazy rule about people worshiping only them and not God. And Daniel stays faithful. His friends stay faithful to the Lord and they should die every time. Like every time it's this like epic story of like, I'm dying in the next hour. And they always end up living and being like showered with all these great gifts and being raised up even higher into like this government system. Sounds a lot like Joseph's story that we studied earlier this year. Like he was sold into slavery. He was in the lowest of the low. And because he just continued to walk faithfully with the Lord and trust in him, God honored him and put him in a very high place that set up his brothers for some pretty great years of like wealth. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, all of that culminating to say, I want us to look at, you've probably heard this a hundred times, but I'm going to say it again, because this was what Daniel lived his life in being, is Romans 13, 1, even though he didn't even know Paul. Every person is to be sub in subjection to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those which exist are established by God. God is the number one authority. His is the kingdom that will never end, and he will always be on the throne. And there are kingdoms that have come and that have gone, and this whatever this is right now will also pass away. But for right now, we've been put in a place where we 
have been asked to obey the authority set above us, right? What are some authorities that are, are placed over your lives right now? Parents. Parents, big one. That authority is still placed over my life as well. It does not leave you when you leave the house, okay? They're still your moms and dads. So you give them the honor and the respect they deserve even after you turn 18. Just a little plug there. Okay, what else? Teachers. Teachers. Government. Government. Whether you like it or not. <laughs> yeah. Do you play sports? Oh, coaches. Coaches. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Do you work? Yes. Bosses. Yeah. Right? They tell you when you're going to work. They tell you when you're going to work out and how you're going to work out. The government tells you what rules, like the laws of the land, like even driving rules. They're the ones who are going to tell you you have to drive on the right side of the road here. <laughs> do what? Yeah, they take your money. And they do take your money, right? <laughs> to pay for things. Um, but we've been called to honor and respect that, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but we know that God, for, for some reason, is allowed for some time for that to be an authority. And that if we're not respecting, that doesn't mean that you have to agree, Right? Daniel, you're going to, if you go, even just read the next chapter. Go read chapter 3 in Daniel. It's about when King Nebuchadnezzar builds a gold statue about himself and tells everyone you have to pray to it this many times a day. And, like, in front of everyone, if you don't, you die. You get thrown into a fiery furnace. Is this ringing a bell to anybody, fiery yeah, furnace? Like yeah, there you go. Yeah. Okay. Um, but the point in that is Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and Daniel could respect that that was a law they gave, but they didn't follow it, right? But they didn't have to throw a fit about it either. So, my driving point here um, that I just want to leave you guys with is the biggest thing that we struggle with in our own personal lives is that we want to be in control of our world and our lives. We want to be the one to call the shots for us, no matter what it is. Especially as a girl, that is one of my biggest struggles. I do what I want, when I want, how I want. Anybody relate to that? <laughs> yeah? But yet, as a believer, I'm called to lay down my life and to submit myself to God's authority. I love what God says to Job in Job 38. He says, where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Where were you when I told the oceans to stop? Like, God is the one who is set time, who establishes people and also removes them. So my challenge again to you guys is to think who is truly the driving force and driving authority in my life? Is it myself? Am I letting other people drive authority in my world? Am I letting other people tell me how to be or who to be? Or am I allowing God to do that for me? And what does it look like for me to live my life subject to God's authority? So I'm going to pray for us. There we go. Lord God, thank you so much for tonight. Um, thank you for just the opportunity that we got just to hang out here um, and just open your word. Lord, it is a blessing. No matter what day or time um, it is that we just get to open up your written word and just hear truth. So God, I just pray that if there's anything that I said that is not of you or word, Lord, let it fall on deaf ears. God, please go before us, go behind us. May we recognize who is truly an authority of our lives, and may we lay aside the desire to control our own lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.